Hi, this is Mike Mulholland, and we're going to be looking at a problem, a trigonometry problem involving compass bearings and distances. And one tip for how you may want to watch this, one is if you have a hard time um, seeing the equations, you may want to put your video in uh, full screen mode. And the other is that I'm not going to take the time to go through every step in the algebra of solving the equations. But of course, you're welcome to pause the video at any time and look at the steps because I do show them all on the screen. OK, so here's the question. We've got radio direction finder set up at points A and B, 8.68 miles apart on an east-west line. And we have a radio transmitter at C. And so this and this can determine the direction that this signal is coming from. But they're in compass bearings, which is not the way we're used to looking at angles in trigonometry. So how do compass bearings work? There's uh, three parts to each one. So we can look at this one, for example. And N means that the angle is relative to due north. It's always either N or S for due south. Then we see how many degrees does that angle deviate from true north. And then we see an E or a W for whether it deviates towards the east, like this one does, or towards the west, like that one does. So now we want to get these angles here, because that's the way we're used to working in trigonometry. So we subtract from 90, and this is what we get. And it's kind of odd that we see that this angle is the same as what that one was, and this angle is the same as that one was. And that's because the person who set up this problem chose that the angles would add up to 90 degrees. They didn't have to, but in this case, they do. And so then these add up to 90. That has to be 90. we got a right triangle. We can use our trig functions. Makes it easy. So now what do we do? So there's two easy ways to look at this that are equivalent. We can look from the standpoint of this angle looking that way, in which case we want to find the opposite, and we know the hypotenuse, and its opposite over hypotenuse is the sine. So we go about it that way. Or we can look in this direction from this angle, and then we still want to find the same to this side. So now it's adjacent over hypotenuse, and it's the cosine. So the sine of this angle or cosine of that angle gives the same number because it's still the ratio of this side over that side. And so uh, we just plug in our numbers. We got the, the, the sine or the cosine. We've got the length of the hypotenuse, and we solve for this side here. And we get 5.07 miles. And uh, that looks very plausible um, for the picture that we had. But here's the thing. This is actually a very unrealistic situation with those two angles adding up to 90 degrees. If you are, if you inscribe an angle, within a semicircle like this. Then that angle is always 90 degrees. But that means we can only find distances to points on the circle. And that's not very useful. Most of the time, presumably, they will be outside the circle or inside the circle. So now let's put a case where we've got angles that don't add up to 90 and we're not on uh, and point C is not on the circle a more generalized more realistic case so now we don't have a right triangle to work with but we can solve that by dropping a vertical here and getting two right triangles here and so now we're going to still be trying to find the length of this side but now we're going to call it x and this side that these two triangles have in common, Z, 
and this side y, and we know that this then is 8.68 minus y because they add up to 8.68. All right, so now what do we want? How do we go about this? So we have some information about the horizontal legs and vertical legs. So in that case, we're doing, dealing with opposite and adjacent sides relative to these angles. So we're going to be dealing with the tangent. So in this triangle, the tangent of 40 is opposite over adjacent, or z over y. And we solve for z, plug in the value for the tangent, that's what we get. And then in this triangle, the tangent of this angle is z over 8.68 minus y. And so again, we solve for z, and this is what we get. Now we have two functions of z of, of y, I'm sorry, that are both equal to z. So if they're both equal to z, they're equal to one another. So we put one of them here, one of them here, and we go through the algebra of solving that for y. And eventually we get that y is 2.626 miles. Now while we were doing that, we came up with this little equation here. So we, all, we can go back to that and just plug in our value of y to calculate z. But we didn't actually have to determine z. We could have uh, just gone from y directly to x because we could go um, that the cosine of 40 is um, adjacent over adjacent over hypotenuse and we now know the adjacent so we plug those in and we get and then we solve for x and we get this 3.428 miles for x so now we have all three distances but what we should uh and we should round this really to 3.43 since that's what we were asked for, and that's all the number of decimal places the original measurement had. Okay, now what do we do next? We put these into the diagram. We get to a step that we really ought to always make, which is a sniff test, whether the numbers seem plausible, given that this whole thing is 8.68, 2.63 here, 2.2 there. It's a little shorter. Hypotenuse is the longest. It all seems reasonable, passes the sniff test. And finally, another test that we could do to feel comfortable with our answers is see whether these numbers um, are consistent with the Pythagorean theorem. So we plug them in here, and we find that indeed they are. And so there's our problem answered, and uh, thank you for watching. Take care.